At Mount Sinai, God called upon the Jewish people to be a holy people, partners with God in creating a world of justice for all. In Parashat Shoftim, which means judges, they're now on the banks of the Jordan, almost at the promised land, when God tells the Israelites to appoint judges and police officers so they can begin to administer this justice. God's final instruction to them is among the Torah's most famous lines, Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdof, or justice, justice shall you pursue. Why justice, justice shall you pursue? The second justice must have some meaning. Some say justice is repeated for emphasis to teach that pursuing justice is among the most important things a person can do. Others say that it's repeated to teach that we must be just in the way we go about our pursuit of justice. Here in Shovtim, we learn about five kinds of justice. First, God gives the Israelites a lengthy list of instructions about what they can and cannot do when they worship. They can't plant a tree or build a monument near God's altar, and they aren't allowed to sacrifice any animal that has a blemish. Above all, they're warned not to worship idols or intentionally break God's law because the punishment is death. Addressing the second form of justice, God tells the children of Israel that when they arrive in the Promised Land, if they really want, they can be like other nations around them and appoint a king. Criteria for qualified royalty are pretty strict. The king must be from their own nation, must not keep in excess of horses, wives, silver, or gold. In addition, the king must write his own Torah scroll and read it regularly to remind him to follow its laws. And he must rule fairly, treating all people alike, no matter how rich or poor they are. For the third form of justice, God tells the children of Israel to create cities of refuge in the Promised Land. If the person accidentally kills someone, he or she can flee to these cities and be safe from relatives of the dead who might seek revenge. But if someone intentionally commits murder and tries to escape into the city of refuge, the elders of that city are to send him or her directly into the hands of the vengeful family. Carrying on with the theme of crime, the fourth part of Parashat Shoftim covers witnesses and testimony. In order for testimony to be valid, not one, but two witnesses must give the exact same testimony. If it is discovered that two witnesses got together to make up false testimony, the Torah says to rid the city of that evil, in this case to kick out the false witnesses. In another famous line, the Israelites are told not to have compassion for them, a life for a life, an eye for an eye, and so on, to scare the daylights out of others who might have been considering providing false testimony of their own. The fifth and final form of justice is about the rules of warfare. God tries to comfort the Israelites, telling them not to be fearful or faint-hearted when they go out to war, even outnumbered by their enemies. Easier said than done. But officers were also to protect the lives of soldiers who had a lot to lose or a lot of living left to do. By telling their armies, whoever has built a new house but hasn't lived in it yet, go home. Whoever has planted a vineyard and hasn't picked the fruit yet, you go home. And whoever is engaged to a woman but hasn't married her yet, you can go home too. For 3,000 years, the command, Justice, Justice Shall You Pursue, has defined who the Jewish people are and what they're about, especially today, in the face of the critical need to ensure justice on issues like environmental devastation, economic injustice, genocidal activity around the globe, this call warns us, we dare not wait for opportunities to do justice, but rather must act assertively to address the great moral issues of our time. That is our heritage. May we prove worthy.